Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks for staying here. I will present you, uh, well, an introduction. It's not really an experience, because it's not what I've experienced it. But it's not something I've applied. It's just a presentation of what student modeling is, and specifically a uh, procedure named uh, Bayesian knowledge tracing. Well, the presentation will be divided in three parts. Uh, first, we will present the context of student modeling and which are the key pieces that we need to know if we would like to apply this kind of, of methodologies. Secondly, I will introduce you the probably the most well-known student model, which is uh, Big AT, stands for the Bayesian Knowledge Tracing. And we will see an implementation how it works, how it gets calculated, which uh, output you receive, and well, some some interpretation of, of, of it. And lastly, I will very briefly, if I get there, I'll be lucky, um, tell some places where student modeling is being used nowadays, here in Europe, here in and also in the States, and possible extensions for this kind of of algorithms. So let's get there. Um, when we are speaking about student modeling, uh, usually we have to think of intelligent tutoring systems, which are systems that control, manage uh, student, uh, sorry, um, mat school material in order to personalize the learning experience for students. We have to imagine a world, a learning world in which we don't have 40 students in class, we might have 1,500, and then adapting with a teacher content to each student, that might be complicated. Okay, so that's part of the, of the context. In this case, and we see a very, uh, very simple uh, tutoring system. Someone could even uh, discuss that this is a tutoring system, but uh, I like it to, to show to show. This is from the Open Learning Initiative, and it's a, a question about calculating a median in the statistics and probability course in the for University. It has the, the, the specific features of any student modeling system, uh, intelligent tutoring system, because it will adapt content to students, and it will provide feedback, and students will, will get something from this. In this case, the question is simple. Here are the numbers of hours that nine students spend on computer on a typical day. Which, what is the median number of uh, students spend on their computer? If you really forgot on the median, and you say five because you like five and it's twice, the system tells you that uh, it's incorrect because you confuse the median with the mode. And if you realize um, all, all possible answers in the, the offered, address, except for the, the correct one, address specific misconceptions that students might have when calculating the median. The one I really like is number eight. If you have, a, if you have not sorted properly data, you would think that the, mid, the middle point, that's your real median, but in this case it's not because it's not properly sorted, which is a typical misconception for students when calculating medians by hand. Once you get the correct answer, which is seven, just in case, um, the system tells you a uh, feedback, which is positive, and in case someone got to the answer by chance or by any other uh, imaginable way, it tells you the proper way to have solved the problem, just in case you, you didn't know it the first time. Okay? This is a simple tutoring system, that's a more complex one, and uh, loads of them are available and are used in, in several places. Okay? But at the end, the, the idea beneath them is it's the same. Because uh, intelligent tutoring systems aim at detecting and fitting individual differences in at least these domains and sometimes not even the three of them. Student knowledge, student engagement, and student mm -hmm. motivation. Because if we can address particular issues in, in all these three topics, we can uh, choose curricular material and methods suited to each individual. Because then learning experience gets better and students get the most from the time they are with. Okay? So, the area of study covering the set of tools and techniques to achieve this assessment is known as student modeling. Okay? So, we want techniques 
that help us in knowing what the students know, knowing if they are motivated, knowing in which are their interests at studying the topics they have. Okay. Usually, when we address student knowledge, we do exams, we do quizzes, we do loads of stuff in order to see how students get the material. Okay. Because the underlying idea is that the best possible estimation of student knowledge is obtainable by observing the student performance. This is helpful, but this has a problem. Student knowledge, student performance is observable, but student knowledge, it's not. It's something later. It's hard to see them up here. Okay? Before I, I run into the, <coughs> the models themselves, I'd like to present you the definition I'm thinking of every time I'm talking about knowledge, which is not a, a perfect definition, and it's not part of my research of uh, domain expertise. <coughs> but I will use Kellinger's definition based on knowledge components. So we can break knowledge into different pieces, which I sometimes I prefer calling them skills rather than knowledge components, because it's shorter and I make less English mistakes. And it creates some uh, knowledge, some tools that help you solve problems or address particular issues. The idea is to have generalized, granularized um, uh, definitions in order to address particularly every uh, step of the student's thinking. Okay. Using this, the, those are some of the most uh, used uh, st uh, student modeling uh, procedures. Someone would argue if, if item response theory is really a student model, it is not, but it's used. It is not because it can track uh, the process of learning. It can measure very well the knowledge at a, at a given time point, but it doesn't incorporate the time or the learning process. Okay? From all of them, I will, I will talk a little bit about the Bayesian knowledge tracing, which was developed by Corbett and Anderson in 1995, and it has loads of extensions, loads of modifications, loads of different, uh, but I'll explain the, the basic one. Okay? Big AT is a model used to enforce the knowledge given their history of responses. So, we need repetition. We will assess knowledge by uh, having a student repeating something, and if through this process we'll see if he knows it or not. Okay? BKT is a two-state hidden Markov model, which is something complicated in math, in which we have two states that will have a, a better explanation for this. One is the student doesn't know the skill, the other is the student does indeed know the skill. Okay? Something important is these um, kind of models are thought for short time working. So you can you never forget what you learn, which is uh, something that would be fantastic. But if we assume this short time uh, in which the model works, it's uh, we, you, you can assume this. The problem is when the model is being used and it is being used in long term uh, knowledge processes. Okay. And at last, usually a separate BKT model is fit for each skill, its knowledge component, and only first attempt. And this is in, this is is used because you've seen that the feedback that the, this kind of tutoring systems provide really uh, make your life easy if you're a student. So if you, we want to assess if a student knows the skill, the first attempt is the one that we use. Feedback is useful because it's helpful to go from the not, not knowing state to the knowing state, okay? Let's see this, we are in a world where knowledge is not observable and performance is. We said that there are two states, one in which we don't know and the other in which we, in what we know. And we will call L sub t, uh, subscript t, sorry, the probability that you are in a given moment in that knowledge state. Uh, performance has only two possibilities which is incorrect answer, correct answer. Uh, all, all answers are treated as, as, by, as binomial situations. And ideally, if you don't know, you can provide a correct answer. And if you know, you can provide a correct answer. And we hope that eventually you will learn and you will go from unknown to, from, uh, to know it. And we will go t the probability to learn, the probability that, that there is a transition from one state to the other. 
problems happen, and sometimes students who don't know, they get magic powers, and they provide correct answers, and dramatically for people teaching, students who know stuff, they get into trouble by providing correct answers, and we will call G and S the probability of guessing, which is providing a correct answer when, when you don't know the hell what, uh, what you were saying, and or sleeping, which is, yeah, the sleeping. It makes sense in, in, in Spanish. Um, oh, okay. We should think of this uh, this schema. Yeah. Uh, every time a student is uh, answering a question with one skill tagged to it, okay. But this happens many times, okay. This happens many times. So we need something that I did, did not define. Uh, something called L zero, which is the probability that the student just by uh, answering some, uh, just that the probability that the student knows the skill without having addressed any possible question because the skill is easy, because he already knew this, any, any possibility, okay? At, at its attempt, we will have an outcome, we'll recalculate the probability of being at the learning state, and so on. Formulas are beautiful, so let's see them. So we, we said we start from L0, and then the student gets a, provides an answer. Well, using this, this outcome, we can recalculate which was his really real probability after he has given us a, a response. So we update the probability that before answering that question, he already was in the knowledge state. Uh, I've got four minutes, so I won't go to the, to the <laughs> formulas themselves, okay? One, we have this, we can update the probability again, assuming that in the process of answering that question, he learned something, and maybe he jumped from the ignorance uh, situation to the mastery situation. Okay? And after this, we can provide an estimate of which would be the, the probability that he will res uh, respond correctly uh, the next question tagged with that very same skill that we are all the time analyzing. Uh, again, I repeat, uh, we have a model for, for every single skill. Okay? So let's imagine we are in a, with a skill which is calculating the median for the sake of the proper understanding that has these values for the probabilities, parameters. And we have a student that provides us for uh, five answers. Okay? The first one he makes it wrong, then he makes two right and on in a row, wrong and right. Okay? If we apply the formulas that we, we saw before, we see that he was expected to uh, know, to have a 0 0.25 probability of knowing that skill at before starting, but just what's up here, that he provides a bad, a bad um, a answer. So his probability came quite dramatically down, and no chance he it. But just by trying and getting the feedback, he might have learned something. And he might have a probability a little bit lower than he was before, but uh, still to be in the, in the learning state. If we develop the, everything, we'll see that. Yeah. Big AT is pretty optimistic, which is something that mm, sometimes gets that's problems because as, at every attempt there is a, a T probability of transitioning to the knowledge state. It's always summative. You will get never back. But still. So this student, after these five answers, well, we are pretty certain that he might be in the in the knowledge state. Okay? Again, that was super brilliant. Uh, where is student modeling being used? Okay, it's I will present you three uh, different tutoring systems, two of them from the United States, one from Europe, and uh, that will be fast. Uh, one of them is assessments, which is being used for by loads of students who have answered loads of problems, most of them from K-12. They are based on Worcester, which is somewhere in the east, no, northeast coast in the United States. The community tutor I showed before, it's from CMU, which is the very same thing that Cristobal was showing us before about uh, Learn Lab, PSLC, they have loads of things with uh, different names, but it's the same place. But that's a short 
I met loads of students. Only the algebra tutor is being used by 17,000 students in 147 schools, which is loads of students and loads of schools. And at last, one that I really, I really like. They are from from the Czech Republic, and they have loads of very nice features using geography and the research that is amazing. Okay. The, Something nice about uh, this uh, modeling, uh, the student modeling techniques, is that they can be used in almost any other environment where personalization nece is necessary and repetition is in play. Okay? If you can think of any problem that involves repetition, you can use these techniques, which is something very useful. And I'm off time uh, like 20 seconds ago. So thank you very much. If there's any question, I'll, I'll discuss what we'll Any question?